I am Commander Tom, and longtime fans of the channel will know that uh, I've greatly been getting into Dungeons and Dragons on Friday nights with my friends from the arcade. And I like the simple solution to magical problems whenever possible. I think that has to do with a lot of the things I watched when I was growing up, like MacGyver, The A-Team, all of the Doctor Who. I always like to find the mundane solution to the evil wizard's plot. So today I wanted to share some tips and tricks for what I think you should do for the gear for your first 10 gold. What mundane items are worth their weight in doubloons to really give you the tools you need to solve the challenges those DMs put before you. So let's get into it. And by starting and cheap, I mean cheap. Your first two items we're not even going to buy. When that first campfire goes out, I recommend you hit the fire pit and pick up ash and charcoal. Because ash is a cheap early invisibility detector. You think you've got something invisible watching your every step? Get a handful of ash, throw it in the way. Get a little bag, keep some for the down the road. Charcoal? Well, that's a cheap early pencil. Okay, you can write on paper, non-paper surfaces also, you know, like the walls, the stone, some trees. If you want to be able to take a few notes on the cheap, charcoal's a good way to go. This is a weightless wonder that doesn't cost you a darn thing. If you're going to be starting around a campfire, I always encourage it. Next up then, when you get to town, pick up a sheet of paper. This so you can take notes. Now, if you are taking notes in real life about these items, I'm going to give you a little bit of a break. I promise you, at the end of this video, I will give you a single screen with a listing of everything on here, so you can take your screenshots and notes very simply once you hit pause on that end screen, just for your reference. In D&D, though, you can take notes. You can take rubbings of ruins or any items that you want to be able to take notes very quickly on. This is also something that might be handy if your DM is being very cruel on your ability to start a fire. Paper is a great kindling. All of this for two copper pieces. This also brings up how I'll be showing currency in this. If you've never thought about it, you know, if you haven't done any D&D &D planning on, say, Microsoft Excel or something like that, just think about it. A gold piece is a great $1 position. Dimes are in the silvers pennies or coppers. If you've never thought about it before, here's a bonus tip for you to do for managing down the line. Moving on, we're going to get, well, no, not rope, but rope is great. Take that too. We'll talk about it later. But I find more versatility in string. And as a scout commander who's done a lot of lashing outside, let me tell you, string is what gets used often. String is great for trip lines. Anytime you want to trip someone up, use some string. If you uh, pick up uh, the fish hooks from, you know, the fishing kit, maybe if you sweet talk your uh, DM into just letting you buy the hooks themselves, this is a great feature to add versatility to those strings. Yes, you can fish with them, <laughs> but they're also great for stealing. Picture yourself as a rogue laying on the rafters above the table, trying to steal the important keys, satchel, pouch, paper that your team needs. This is a great way to reach those things that you want to get, yet still st remain concealed. Also, add a bell. Now granted, it is a gold piece, but then you have the mundane alarm system with a string and a bell. Get three or four of those around you at night at camp, and you've got an early warning system that doesn't require any sort of arcane power. Pay, uh, the string will cost you two silver, the bell will add a dollar if that's your option. Let's talk about the humble burlap sap. This is something that you will need to hold your treasure and any other goods. I'm not talking about your backpack, that's for you to keep, but you need something to expand your storage when you want to carry more home. Also, let's think about your line of work. Chances are you're going to kill things. Many of those things are valuable. This is a way for you to hold biological samples on your trip home without soaking your backpack in monster goo. 
all those heads, horns, wings, toes, scales, all the things that go bump in the night in the parts that make those things up, bring them back to town, sell them off. <laughs> Just keep your pack clean. This is also a great interview outfit for individuals that you have questions and they have answers. This is the perfect uniform for them to wear as you two discuss your differences in a fair and equitable manner, of course. All of this for one copper penny and half a pound of weight that you pull out of your backpack when you need it. I'll go with that any day. Let's talk about chalk. Chalk is a great item. Do you cave? Are you going on a dungeon crawl? Use chalk to draw an arrow back home at every turn. Okay? Use this as a little bit of DM prevention to say, you got lost. How can I get lost if I have drawn an arrow back home every corner? It's a discussion to have. <laughs> Additionally, chalk can be ground into dust, so this becomes invisibility detector number two. They're out there. Plan accordingly. All of this for a single copper piece, and it's another weightless wonder. A whetstone. Now, a whetstone is a great item that I love to have and is underestimated. A whetstone is a way for you to turn trash into cash. How many times have you defeated your foes and you say, I want to raid their pockets? And they look around and, well, they've got some swords and axes, but they're pretty rusty and blunt and not very good. Take them anyway. Take them back to your base. Sharpen them up. You can keep them or you can sell them for a little bit of gold. If you've had a DM that has been slow on paydays, this is a way for you to help accelerate that curve. Or, quite frankly, once you sharpen them up, it might be worth it to you. Sharpen your blades is something you can do while you're actually role playing during your downtime. If you're on those boat trips from A to B, or you have to wait around for your contact to show up and your DM is asking, what are you doing? Take out the whetstone and sharpen your blades. I have honestly had DM say, Tom, you're always sharpening your blades. And I say, my character is in the middle of a combat zone. He's sharpening his blades, yes. I did that so much one game that a DM actually said, you're always sharpening your blades. Add plus one damage to your blades. You've gotten them ridiculously sharp by now. It's conversation for your DM, but it's not unreasonable. All of this for a single penny. That is an upgrade. Moving on, we also have candles. Now, candles, of course, are great for light. Duh, obviously. Okay, but candles are also great for a timer delay. Candles will burn for an entire hour downward. One could easily see a candle placed upon a powder keg. And that powder keg in the enemy's armory. And you light the candle and you have an entire hour to get out of dodge before the armory blows. That would be a spectacle to behold. I'm just saying, candles are also easy enough to cut in half or to cut into quarters for a 30 or a 15 minute timer. Very reasonable as well. You guys can do math from there. I'm giving you ideas. You figure out how to implement them entertainingly. Wax is also super useful by itself. Okay. How many times have you heard the story of the sirens with their enchanting uh, songs? beckoning sailors to their doom or poisonous gas use wax earplugs nose plugs protect yourself it's a dangerous world out there stay alive with a candle also let's think about more espionage here wax is a great item for making molds of ruins that you find making keys duplicate keys to get to places you're not supposed to signet rings in the setting that most D&D campaigns are in it's not identification cards it's signet rings well make a copy of the ring you have it now too all of this for one copper piece and it's another weightless wonder next up 
soap. And we would consider it simple, but I find it so versatile. Just like the album cover and says, it's slippery when wet. Are you at the top of a stairs or at the top of a mountainscape? Got a little water? Got the soap? Go ahead and make a trap. <laughs> soap is also the entry level to poisons because it's a diuretic when ingested. If you've got to guard that, you really need them to move, but you don't have a fancy soap with you or a fancy poison with you. Shave a little soap into a drink. Offer the drink to the guard. Who's going to turn down a drink? <laughs> Wait a little bit. He'll move. <laughs> and just because you are a murder hobo doesn't mean you need to smell like one. Soap has the obvious uses as well. If you're going into town or talking to anyone in the higher class, clean yourself up for goodness sake. You've got monster guts on your outfit. All of this for two copper pieces, and it's another weightless wonder. Moving on, a flask, and I mean an empty flask, actually, because you will kill stuff. Their blood is valuable also. Don't just leave it on the ground. Take a good amount of it back home. You'll be surprised how many alchemists and apothecaries will want that stuff. Now, any other fluid also that your DM talks about that isn't water, in fact, just burn this into your memory. If they say strange liquid, just make it your reflux. I use my empty flask and I take a sample. <laughs> just make that your reflex. You'll appreciate it. Now, I like empty flasks because I find flasks are sturdier than a glass bottle. When you're on your way out of the cave or off the mountain, I find it far less likely that your DM will say, your flask was broken as compared to saying the glass bottle shattered when it hit the rock. Protect yourself against, you know, spiteful DMs. Use an empty flask. All of this for just two copper pieces. That's a deal. Moving on to communication and the signal whistle, which I really love. You got to keep in mind that speech is roughly limited to about 120 feet, and not everyone has the message spell. So if you can only yell at barely 120 feet, a signal whistle can carry your whistle 750 feet or more. That 750 is roughly about 25 turns. So that's a heck of an early warning to set up a guard, have them blow the whistle, and you've got a bit of time to get your defenses prepped. That's thinking ahead. And that is only going to cost you five copper. That's worth it to me. Now let's talk about an actual flask of oil, a full flask of oil. Obviously, oil is great lubricant for rusty. Okay, all those locks, hinges, nuts, bolts. Okay, basically, if something doesn't move and it should, use oil. And then if something moves and it shouldn't, well, that's what rope is for. <laughs> okay, but this is a fantastic lubrication also for floors. All those reasons for uh, soaping the floors. If you've got flask and oil, that probably does the job even simpler and easier. Also, remember that string you brought earlier? If you take that string and you add that to a flask of oil, you know where I'm going. You've just invented the Molotov cocktail. Show those spellcasters what it's like to actually feel a fireball for once. From a mundane player, I love this kind of versatility. And all of this for one silver piece. Let's check out pitons. You can buy them by the 10 pack. Now, typically they are part of mountain climbing gear, or let's be honest, scaling the walls of your castle gear. It's all fine to me, but they're a very handy piece that I encourage anyone to get, even when they're not scaling the mountains. These are great for all those trip lines. This is a great anchor to pound those into the walls of which to tie the trip lines to. Also, as you're in the castle, think of pounding this into the floor to keep that door closed. This is a quick and simple door jam. And also, as I look at it, I see it's metal and it's pointy. Yeah, it's a good improvised weapon as well. 
<laughs> now, a word of guidance here. If you're going to be pounding in pitons, you're going to want to have a hammer to pound them in. Okay. And that by itself is a good backup weapon. If you're going through them for some reason, if you've got one heck of a critter that's busting your weapons, hammer is a good one to go to. Also, if you're one of those people that I don't believe in locks, you know what? A hammer, a piton, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could bust open any lock you wanted. <laughs> All of this for about one gold piece, five silver pieces, and five and a half pounds of weight. Not bad. Up next, one of my favorites, a bag of ball bearings, because you can buy a bag of 1,000 ball bearings cheap. This is your go-to drop trap, okay? Stack it up with the oil, trip lines, drop a 1,000 ball bearings down. You can seriously delay someone. This is also a great mechanic jam. Okay, we talked about oil for wanting to open the locks that are sticky. If you want to make sure locks don't get open, drop a couple of ball bearings into them. That will definitely screw things up. This is also my preference for slingshot ammo because you can buy a thousand of these for much cheaper. This is also a great distraction device, okay? Don't look around for rocks. If you're trying to distract someone, grab one of your 1,000 ball bearings, hurl it. Use the slingshot to hurl it even stronger and further. Now, this is also something that is extremely versatile with a couple of common low-level spells. Light. Take the ball bearing, cast light on it, slingshot that into the eyes of a beholder. That's going to leave a mark. A lit ball bearing is a great distraction, especially when thrown in a dark cave. A lit ball bearing dropped down in a ravine is a great way to figure out how deep it is. There's a lot of versatility with that. Also, ball bearings with heat metal. This is a great distraction. Does someone rough you up in a bar, giving you the stink eye, giving you trouble? Subtly, or even mage hand, a ball bearing down the back of their shirt cast heat metal. <laughs> They'll be distracted. All of this for one gold piece. Man, this is one of my favorite items. Now let's finally talk about rope. You knew it would be on this list. It's just a little bit more expensive than some of the cheap and free items we've been talking about. But yes, absolutely carry rope. Rope is ridiculously useful. Rope you can use for tying up my enemies. You can tie up your friends. You can trip your enemies. You can lasso your animals. You can lasso your enemies. You get the idea here, okay? But if you want full versatility, you're going to want to pick up a grappling hook. That way you can actually go up as well, okay? This is something that if you want to be Batman, you're going to want to have the grappling hook to get full use of your rope. Scale walls. Invisibility detector number three. If you think there's someone around, just start swinging that rope. 50 feet of rope, 50 foot radius swinging around here with a spiked grappling hook. Just make sure to tell your party members to hit the deck first before you start swinging. If there's anyone in that 50 foot radius, <laughs> you'll know. <laughs> All of this for three gold pieces. Now, do keep in mind you are adding about 14 pounds of weight, but you've got the pack for a reason. Finally, let's start talking about a scroll case. This is what I like to call DM insurance, okay? Do you have an important message, an important paper, an important map that you need to get from point A to point B? Put it in a scroll case. When you fall into the river, into the lake, in the snow and the storm comes in, anything that could ruin paper, you'll be happy that the important item is left in your scroll case. All of that water protection is worth it in my humble opinion. This is also a backup container. It's generally waterproof. So if you need to take a lot of a liquid back home, the scroll case could probably do in a pinch. And all of that for $1 for a little bit of peace of mind against whatever challenges your DM may throw at you, I think that's worth it. And finally, you don't buy them, but I encourage you to keep them handy. 20 silver pieces. 
Now for perspective here, 20 silver pieces in the day and age we play of D&D, &D, that's a worth two weeks wages. For most of the things that you're going to be spending your money on, your bar tab, your tavern uh, drinks, room and board, silver will do just fine. I encourage you to keep that uh, silver as well as your coppers in a separate pouch on your belt. You know, let that be what looks like your actual coin purse. Keep the gold in your backpack. This gives you some pickpock protection. Now, I pity the fool that tries to steal from a successful murder hobo, but just in case you DM throws this at you, at worst you lose 20 silver and some copper as compared to 20 gold. There's a bit of a mathematical difference. That, of course, is going to be, you know, two gold worth of silver and only about half a pound of weight. Now, as promised, here is the master list of all the items that we talked about here. If you want a single list as to what that is, this is the screen that you want to take a screenshot of or go ahead and write that down. That way you've got that simple and easy for you to add that into your own games. I try to be of helpful. And for those of you who are curious, I'm keeping my word. This all comes in at under 10 gold. And for those of you who track that, this is about 26 and a half pounds worth of weight. Should fit into your backpack fairly conveniently. <laughs> if you appreciate tips and tricks like this, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. I drop videos like this each week. If you want to know more, that's what playlists are for. I'm Commander Tom, and I will see you next time. Thanks.